Welcome to Beyond the Breakwater, where just beyond the crashing waves of fear, discomfort, and doubt lies the greatest potential for life transformation. We want to guide you into the open waters where the calculated risk you take becomes the turning point for you or your organization to thrive. So drop your anchors and prepare for departure in this week's episode of Beyond the Breakwater. All right, we're back with another episode of Beyond the Breakwater. My name is Lindsay and with me today is Ed. So today we're going to be talking about um, Beyond the Breakwater and just breaking down that analogy a little bit more because Ed and I actually had a really cool opportunity to go Beyond the Breakwater in South Haven, Michigan. And I'm just excited to share it. I know Ed's excited, but Ed, could you explain why we're jumping back into this analogy a little bit? I think this is probably the most important podcast or the most foundation, or maybe that's a good way to say it, because everything is based upon this model. And so I know we've briefly talked about it, but today we're really going to look at it. We're going to unpack it and we're going to actually talk about every element of being in the harbor, uh, being in the transition, being beyond the breakwater. What does that look like? What does that mean? So I think we're going to give a little bit more the the analogy and then the practical of, you know, this is what a boat is and uh, how does that compare to the church and and what are those? So I think this is really, really important uh, for understanding the model. Yeah, I would also say right from the get-go here, if you are listening, we are going to be doing our best to paint you the picture. But if you're able, go ahead and jump over to YouTube, um, type in Beyond the Breakwater podcast. You should be able to find it there because we have some images. We've got videos from our experience. So this will just kind of give you a leg up because I will say that before going on this journey with Ed, I he invited me to go Beyond the Breakwater with him. And I was like, Ed, I've been in a boat before. I know what this is like. But I didn't realize how much the analogy just kind of had its limits in my mind. And it just stopped at a certain point. I think I got to the end of the pier and I was like, all right, I see beyond it. But going out there really, really like drew some conclusions for me, comparisons. So if you can jump over to YouTube, we've got the the pictures and images that you'll see on the video there. I think the pictures are going to help a lot so that uh, everybody has an image in their mind. But I think today is going to be really important to see those pictures so that you really get an understanding of what we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. So I'd let's jump into it um, unless you have something you need to share first. All right. We'll go to the first picture here. We're going to take a step back and kind of look at what is the, the grand aerial view. What is a breakwater? Just a couple seconds, Ed. What would you say is important to know about this picture? A breakwater, just to remind everybody, is um, it's the transitional period from the open seas and the harbor. And so the breakwater is the one that um, it goes from very wavy. And you might recall, I mean, we were out in 12 mile an hour winds on Lake Michigan, and it was um, the waves were four to, feet, mm-hmm. four to five feet high. And the breakwater um, kind of transitions that down so that it takes it from five feet down to four feet, three feet, two mm-hmm. feet, until when we're inside, it's very calm. Mm-hmm. So you just have to understand that the breakwaters are protecting. Mm-hmm. So that's what those two like piers are, like yeah, at the, the end of the piers. lighthouse there, and it you can kind of see there's a like a, a bit of waves as you're getting out closer to the open seas, but it's pretty calm. Um, so Ed, you took this picture, I think, and this was toward the end of the pier, so that's approaching those open seas. Yeah, I think if you can see these pictures, uh, it's just a, a picture of a wave crashing over the breakwater, and it just gives you an idea of how high the waves are, how dangerous it is. And actually, if you're looking at it, you can notice that there's no boats out on this day because it was just way too wavy, too mm-hmm. rough, too rough to be out. And the waves are crashing over. People are walking. They're getting wet while they're walking out in the breakwater. Uh, but that's the open seas, and I think that's why. Uh, let's just let's just talk about this. Uh, the whole purpose for the podcast is beyond the breakwater because there's so much fear, fear of the unknown, uh, fear of danger. Um, I don't know what to do. Am I going to be safe? What's going to happen? And so these are, are just great pictures for people to really understand what it's like being beyond. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. I think even just going back to that video, that's just like the waves are nuts. Like you see the little bobbers in the water and they're just being ripped left and right. So like imagine if those breakwaters weren't there to protect it. Um, and as you get closer and closer into that harbor, it gets a lot, a lot calmer like that. Okay, well, let's go back. Um, 
Now we're looking at the harbor. Mm -hmm. So I want to take our listeners really back to the beginning, like when you put a boat in the water and there's a public launch in South Haven, which is where we put the boat in the water. And then you're starting to go in the harbor and the harbor is, uh, it couldn't be more calmer. I mean, it's like glass. Uh, On either side of the harbor um, are a lot of docks. And uh, in every one of those docks, I'm, I'm not sure there was even any open ones, are a lot of boats. Um, so, Lindsay, I'm going to kind of pitch it back to you. Like, mm-hmm. uh, tell us about the boats that you were looking at. Yeah. So, one, the the place was just filled with boats. You can kind of see that in this picture. The the water is very calm. And on like Ed said, on either side, like every single dock is filled. So you're seeing boats that are in various stages of readiness to go out in the water, whether they're um, assumingly there are some that you could visibly see life jackets on. Some you might assume that there were life jackets on. Some of the boats were either docked or even taking it a step further, raised up out of the water and covered. Some of them had some wear on them. You could tell that they had been used. And a couple of them, a lot of them looked like they had never even touched the water one single time, just perfectly preserved in their original state. So let's begin to draw our analogies. Why? What does this have to do with the church? Uh, I think when you look at boats, you start to see that there's all kinds of different boats. Um, and there's some boats that are in the water and uh, there's fishing gear on them. And you know that is a boat that is for fishing. And so it'd be like a church. What's the purpose of that boat? fishing. So what's the purpose of a church? And a lot of times you can kind of see when you look at the church what their purpose is. Uh, But it's interesting when you start taking a boat out of the water. Uh, Sometimes churches don't really want to be like stained by the world. You know, they don't really want to be in the world. They don't want to really get um, dirty. And so they almost like remove themselves. And, And it's so easy today for churches to isolate themselves and say, oh, we're a little scared about who might come in. Uh, We're scared about security, so we lock the doors. You know, once church starts, we lock the doors. We don't want anybody else coming in. Um, And I think sometimes churches struggle with that, and they're like, oh, we don't really want anybody to, like, mess up our culture or mess up our church, and so we stay out of the water. And I think churches are more sometimes interested in being squeaky clean uh, than they are about being really messy and dirty and being in the water. Mm -hmm. So that would be some of those analogies. And and there's some big boats and there's some small boats. There's big churches, there's small churches. But on the back of every boat, what did you notice? So much branding. Like everyone is so proud of their boats. They name it, they name it each individual some something. I think there's one in here called uh, like Friends and uh, I'm trying to see some titles of them, but now I can't. But yeah, it's all branded. People take pride in what what their their boat's name is and what it represents. So it might be like Baptist or Lutheran or (laughs) non-denomination or something that we all want to have a name Mm -hmm. um, of our boat Mm -hmm. because that kind of marks who we are. Mm -hmm. As we proceed down the harbor, um, there's actually a drawbridge that we go under. And uh, some of the larger boats or sailboats, you know, have to wait for the 30-minute mark um, on the hour and 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 at 30 of each hour uh, for the drawbridge to go up and to go through there. Um, and I think it opened up into another area then. Um, it starts out on the right side, there was a restaurant. And, and I noticed on the, at, on the outside of the restaurant was a broken pier. And it said pier was closed. And that kind of struck me just a little bit because the whole purpose of a pier is to have a boat be able to stop there so that you can get out and go to the restaurant, but it was closed, so you couldn't actually access it. Um, And I think sometimes, you know, churches can get themselves a little bit broken down so that people don't really feel welcome. Um, What would that be tangibly? Like, draw a hard comparison there. uh, I think a church that's in disrepair. I think a church that um, is looking very old, no longer... um, welcoming on the outside, you pull up and you're like, ooh, do I really want to walk into there because it looks broken down? Mm. And if it's broken down on the outside, what does it look like on the inside? And so sometimes we're not even aware because we're so used to that church that what's on the outside matters uh, to people. So I know for us, it said closed, we're not going to go there. We're going to find another place to go because that one was closed. Um, And then right next to that, this is interesting, there was a museum. And uh, I love that. Because how many churches sometimes get caught in back in the day? Like, Mm. back in the day, this is what happened in this church. Back Mm -hmm. in the day, we had all these kids. Especially with the pandemic. There's been a huge shift with the pandemic, and a lot of churches are not 
able to adjust with what the new norm is and they just want to, if if only we can go back, like back when we had like so many small groups and engaged people and now we're working with a little bit of a different scene. Right. And so it's really interesting seeing a museum, a boat museum right there on the water. Uh, And then right next to that, uh, it was kind of interesting because there was a pirate ship. And I kind of smiled, and uh, we got to see the pirate ship when it was out in the open seas. And, and that was a reminder for me, and it always is whenever I see that pirate ship. Uh, we're not the only ones in the open seas. And if you think about a pirate ship, it doesn't stand for something good. Um, usually um, there's bad intentions. And I think the church sometimes forgets uh, that the enemy is working against them. Mm-hmm. And uh, in fact, on the open seas, um, the pirate ship fires off cannons. And I think for churches that are really trying to make a difference in their community, they have to know and recognize that they're always uh, being um, sometimes under attack and they don't even realize it about what else is going on around them. Mm -hmm. I also found it interesting next to that pirate ship, there was a Coast Guard boat, an old Coast Guard boat. And I think what really struck me when I saw the Coast Guard boat is all the people that were in the boat. Mm -hmm. Um, Remember, we're in water, mm-hmm. we're in a harbor, and they were all dressed in their Sunday best. Mm-hmm. And I kind of had to smile because I'm like, these people are in dresses. They are not planning they on are touching the water. They are not <laughs> planning on being in the water or going anywhere near the water, but yet they were actually on the water and they went out on a little tour boat. you know. Mm-hmm. And, they, and I just had to smile because I'm like, wow, sometimes churches are can be that way too. Like we have no intention of necessarily being in messy ministry Mm -hmm. because ministry is messy. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of want to wear our Sunday best and nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong, but they had no intention on being part of a rescue team. Mm -hmm. They were tourists. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes people can walk into our church almost like a tourist, like, oh, I'm just checking this out. You know, I'm a church shopping, church hopping, uh, I'm just not looking really necessarily to become involved in it. I just want something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we saw a lot of that too. There were some some boats that weren't just necessarily like a touristy boat that was a, a hot spot for tourists, but just personal individualized boats where one was raised out of the water. Same thing. This couple was in their clothes, just reading a book on the back. I think the other thing that I watched uh, on the weekend, it's really fun to go because what you see is you'll see groups of people on a boat and they're partying. And I always laugh. They don't take the boat out. They stay on the boat in the dock, tied up. The boat's not running and they have a barbecue. You can see the drinks. Uh, Everybody's having a great time. And so I often thought that was kind of funny. Let's go have a party on a boat, but we won't take the boat out. Mm -hmm. Why do you need the boat to have a party? if you're not going to actually take it out. Um, Okay, well, let's keep going on in our journey because uh, when you run the bend, then there's this old ferry boat and uh, pretty old, all steel, and it's completely docked. It has no intention of ever going out again. And on that ferry boat uh, is a restaurant. And uh, you might remember when we saw that, there's just hundreds of people there that are on a boat for entertainment. Mm Mm-hmm. And boy, when you think about it, sometimes churches can get caught into this. What do you think are some of the things in churches that um, we kind of get stuck on with entertainment? Well, I think sometimes this can happen, and it's not a um, it's not a judgment. I think sometimes if a church loses its mission, uh, the purpose of a ferry is to take people from one place to another place. So what they did is they used a ferry boat, and they just want to keep everybody really happy. And that was the whole purpose. And I think it's so easy for a church to lose the mission on, of we want to really keep people happy. We want to keep them really, um, I don't know if I'd want to go so far as to say entertained, uh, but we're really, we're more interested in, you know, are they enjoying themselves? Are they having a good time? Are they doing all that? Instead of, uh, wait, the purpose of a church is to go rescue the lost Mm -hmm. and to be in mission. And I think it's really easy for churches to lose sight of the mission um, in lieu of trying to make people feel really good mm-hmm. and really happy so that when they leave, they're like, oh, I feel really good. That was an amazing worship. That was awesome. That was great. Mm-hmm. Yes, but what did it have to do with the mission? Um, and I think that's really, uh, I know we're going to talk about this, but I think one of these questions that I keep pondering over and over and over 
is what do you call a church that's lost its mission? And I think it's probably one of the most important questions we could ever ask yourself. Anybody who's in ministry, anybody who's in a church, if a church has no mission, and the mission Jesus made very clear, go make disciples of all nations, uh, he said, you'll be my witnesses. He talked about seeking and saving the lost. He talked about parables of the lost coin, the lost son, the lost sheep, that he talks about all of heaven rejoicing when one sinner repents. What happens when a church loses that mission and they no longer seek, they no longer are striving? And I'm afraid to say, I think a church, when it loses its mission, is more like a club for saints. Mm. And I think that ferry boat was a really good representation of, here's a boat that lost its mission of carrying people from one place to another, and it changed its mission, and the mission was to keep everybody happy. And boy, there's a danger for churches when your your interest is keeping everybody happy on the boat, as opposed to saying, we're going out in mission for Christ. Mm -hmm. I think there's another layer too, when you're looking at people who are in boats, they're dressed in their clothes, never intending once to touch the water. I'm imagining in that scenario, you're feeling pretty secure in knowing that, okay, the boat's not going to capsize. I, I'm just fine in my clothes. I know they're not going to get wet. Like, where do you have to place your trust in that, in that regard? So when you're drawing a comparison to the church, I think, you know, sometimes the church can be brought into a place where we're, we're running out of our comfort zone. We're running in the still waters and everything we're doing is just on our own strength and on our own accord and our own ideas that we've never had to like step into a place where, oh boy, I better put a life jacket on or, oh boy, I better prepare to, to get wet. Yeah. I think where you're headed on this, which is really uh, a frightening thought, for churches, and I, and I want churches to take this with a, with a good heart because that's how I mean it. If you lose your mission and you're tied up as a church and you have no intention of going anywhere and you really don't have an intention to go seek and save the lost, uh, it's really easy to get caught up in uh, other things that are not so important. And when you lose the mission, uh, where's your trust? Uh, if you're not going to go in the open seas with a boat, what what are you trusting? Your boat's not going to sink. You're tied up. Do you need God? I think that's probably one of the hardest questions that every pastor and every board and every church has to ask and every church leader. If we're not putting ourselves in a position where we have to trust God, do we need God? And that's a hard thing for a church. And I know, I know, some pastors will say, you know, shame on you, don't even say that, because we have to trust God for what, finances, so that everybody mm -hmm. has a job? Is that what we mean by finances, or is that what we mean by trusting God? Mm -hmm. And and I think my greatest fear, this is just me to you, my biggest fear for the church is churches have tied themselves up, no intention of going in the open seas, no intention to go seek and save the lost, and God could probably leave for a few years, and come back, and there'd be no change in the church. It would keep mm -hmm. doing the same thing over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where this analogy is so critical, mm -hmm. uh, because until you place yourself in a position where you are scared, like, God, we are going after that lost person, and we don't know what to do or how to do it. Um, we really need you. Mm -hmm. And here'd be an example of that. Let's just say a church is docked for a long time, and a new pastor comes in, and he's really excited, and he's like, you know what? Um, Let's fire up the engines and take the boat out. That's what it's designed to do. The fear is people are going to say, whoa, 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 what are you doing? We don't do that here. That's not our purpose. Your job, pastors, is to keep us really happy. Preach good sermons. Take care of us. That's all we want. We're not here to go seek the, seek the lost. And, and that becomes really hard for a pastor because if he's like, no, we got to fire up the engines because that's what God called us to do. What's going to happen in the church? People might leave and they're going to be like, oh, we didn't sign up for that. Then they'll get off your boat and they'll walk across the dock to find another boat and they're going to go onto that boat. Mm. Um, so I think this analogy is so critical for pastors to realize and for churches to realize that God has commissioned us. He's charged us. Go after that lost person. Leave the 99 and go after the one. And sometimes that means you got to leave the 99 at the dock 
And you got to go searching for that one lost person. Okay, I want to go on because there's mm -hmm. some other things we saw in the harbor. Mm -hmm. uh, you might recall uh, right after the boat for entertainment uh, that we saw, um, we saw a club. It was a yacht club. And I just laugh every time I see it because I think that really is represent re representative of churches today. Uh, if you're on the land, uh, you can't even go into that mm -hmm. parking lot without fear of being towed away. So the only ones that were welcome at the club were the club members. Hmm. Nobody else was welcome. Uh, and then it was really funny because there's a sign on the water that says public welcome. And so you go, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I'm public confused. welcome. <laughs> I'm confused too. Public is welcome, but all the barriers, you're going to be told mm -hmm. if you park here. And um, and then there was actually somebody outside and he wasn't being welcoming. He was going to be like, what are you doing here? You know, mm -hmm. what are you parking your boat here? What do you want? Mm -hmm. And uh, and it was one of those, wow, how many churches get caught up into that too? Like, like, Club mentality, who's mm -hmm. welcome? The people that have been there for a really long time. And new people come in and they're like, Do, am I really welcome? Yeah. Why it's am like I if not there is welcome? any ounce of confusion or any ounce of, oh, I don't know if I'll be well received here, yes. people just keep moving. Yes. Well, because there's two. There's that place where you can get gas. And then there was a marina right across the harbor. Mm. And the other marina was very welcoming. Mm-hmm. And I know for me, if I'm looking for gas, I'm going to go to the place that was welcoming. I'm not going to go to the place that was really club-like and that I didn't really feel welcome. Mm -hmm. And so I think churches have to just really look at that. Like, are you really a welcoming place? Mm -hmm. Do people on the outside feel like you're welcome when you when you pull in? Even if you just meander in in a boat to say, hey, I'm here to get some gas. You know, can you help? I'm here for a funeral. Can you help? You know, I'm here for a wedding. Can you help? We're looking for something. Can you help me? Sure. Welcome. We're so glad you're here. Yeah. And that's what I always feel at the other marina. So that's the one that I always go to. So jump over to the other marina then. What would that be a comparison for? Is that a church? Is that the world? Like, what is that? Yeah. Okay. Everybody's got to listen to the next episode. They really do, because I'm going to really unpack what is a mm. marina. Um, so we've been using the docks as an example of what churches are. But I think there's more to that. So in a really short version, I think the church should see themselves more like a marina, a full-service marina. Because when you pull into that marina, if you need fuel, you can get it there. There's mechanics there to help you with your boat. So think about your life. You pull in, there's something not right in your life. And then the church is like, how do we come alongside you? What do you need from us? Well, I'm here for supplies great. How can we encourage you, supply you, get you everything you need so that you can go on a mission again? Mm -hmm. So I'm really coming to that point of realizing um, that the boats that are tied up have a mission, and we're going to really talk about that next time. But the marina is what the church should be, like this hub, this hub where people, you've got mechanics and you've got people that are uh, behind the counter, you've got people that are cleaning the boat and people that are uh, servicing with uh, fuel. And, um, and that should be the model for the church, for the whole community, that it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter how big your boat is, it doesn't matter what you're driving, it doesn't matter what's going on in your life. You can come in as a very broken person and find help. You can mm -hmm. come in as a squeaky clean and, um, and find encouragement. Mm -hmm. um, so it that's seems, kind of my model for the church. It seems like, too, like everybody in the marina who belongs to the marina or is employed by it has a job. Yes. So maybe in a church, those who are, rather than it being a club for the saints, it is, it's a place to carry out your gifts. It's a place that everybody is tasked with something for the broken to come in and receive rest and be taken care of. Yes. So I don't want to spoil it because next episode, we're going to talk about how the church goes beyond the breakwater, but then the, the, it comes back. Mm -hmm. And when it comes back and the crew is tired and they've been working all week in the community, and they've been trying to find a lost person, and it's hard, and it's messy, and then when you get back, you need rest, and you need other crews to kind of come alongside. Um, in fact, I will tell you what I believe worship should be um, in the marina. It would be like all week long, the church is out beyond the breakwater, Monday through Saturday, and then they come back on Saturday night, and they go to church on Sunday, and they celebrate and they worship God mm -hmm. for everything that God did throughout the week mm -hmm. and how he provided the opportunities for the church to seek, 
somebody who may not be, um, doesn't know Christ. Mm -hmm. And they come in weary and tired. So whether it's in the workplace, whether it's in a school as a teenager, uh, it doesn't matter. Um, so it's not just the church beyond the breakwater, it's individuals going on beyond the breakwater. And then mm -hmm. everybody comes back on Sunday. Yeah. So we also saw something in the harbor. There were a bunch of uh, little guys all like putzing around on little boats. Can you explain what that would be an analogy? Yeah, that was incredible. That was a like a yacht club. It was like a training yacht club. And they had these tiny little boats, little, little, sun, um, like sunfish boats. And each one had maybe a 10 year old uh, on the boat and they were learning how to sail in the harbor. So it was safe. Mm -hmm. That's called discipleship. That's our kids' ministries. Mm -hmm. See, because you have to teach them to put a life jacket on. You got to teach them how to sail a boat and you're doing it in a very safe atmosphere. But the goal of all of those kids is to keep growing up, being discipled, getting a little bigger boat, little bigger boat, because I know they were all dreaming about going beyond that breakwater because mm -hmm. that's, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. So I love that model because we're training up kids. But Lindsay, I can't stress enough. They were being prepared for the mission, the mission to go beyond the breakwater. Mm -hmm. Every child's ministry, we should be training up our kids to go beyond the breakwater in the high school. We should be training them up to go into the public school where they're going to be witnesses for Christ. We should be training up young people so that when they go off to college uh, and they've got a life check on them, which is Jesus, and we should be training them to go beyond the breakwater so that they're like, okay, I was trained for this. I The pirate ships are out here. Um, this is really hard out here. Um, and we're training them. But see, I think sometimes... We're training them to know Jesus, but we're not training them to go beyond the breakwater. And I think there's a big difference. Mm -hmm. When you're training somebody up to, to, this is who Jesus is, that's great. Now I'm thrown into a place that I don't know how to survive. I don't know how to do this. Um, and then out of fear, sometimes they come back in and say, this is too scary. Or they abandon it. They just abandon their faith. So the goal, the goal should be like those kids, train them up in these small boats, always telling them, you're going beyond the breakwater. And that's where you're going to go. So let's get you ready for beyond the breakwater. Mm -hmm. Discipling for the purpose of mission. Yes. Yeah. So I think in this journey, we are getting pretty close to the open seas. Um, we'll kind of bounce back to the, the images here. Right now, this is just about to enter onto those open seas. You see a little, I don't know, what is that little tiny boat in it's the, the corner? Dinghy. Just a little boat. <laughs> and then you got the, the big one mm -hmm. that... What is the purpose of that boat? Well, it's kind of a yacht. See, those are different purposes. The yacht is for entertaining. It's for long distance. Uh, it's for taking people, you know, from one port to another port and living in the boat. Uh, it could be a family that's living on that and taking a lot of guests out. You know, mm -hmm. that's not for water skiing. Uh, <laughs> that's not, that's, um, it's more of a luxury boat. Mm -hmm. And it's a party boat oftentimes, you know, that you go out and have fun on it. Yeah. Um, and a small dinghy that's really just you might go out you might do some fishing uh you might just have fun you know uh, when you're on a eight foot boat and you're on five foot waves uh it's a hoot yeah yeah we kind of experienced a, a little bit of that we'll we talk about in the next yeah. episode but like we had talked about there are churches of, of different sizes um different different congregation sizes ability to to go out and do things and i'm curious if these boats actually went beyond the breakwater or if they just kind of turned around and went back in the harbor because they needed to putz around a little bit more i'm guessing that big boat went beyond the breakwater because it's designed and ready for it. It's prepared. See, mm -hmm. that's the key. Mm -hmm. The big boat is prepared for the open seas. The little boat's probably not prepared. It's probably not built to stand, stay out there very long. So they just wanted to go out and experience a little bit of that and come back in. Mm -hmm. You know, but isn't it how it is for people in the church? You know, like, okay, I'm going to venture out a little bit, you know, going to go to work and maybe I'm going to tell somebody I'm praying for them. That's awesome. That's beyond the breakwater. Mm-hmm. To say that to somebody and you're like, okay, I'm a little scared. Then I come back in real quick. Like, yeah. okay, now I'm safe again. So I think we need everybody in the church. We need big ministries, small ministries, individual people. All of them, all of them are working in conjunction for one singular purpose of a mission to seek and to save the lost. Yeah, I think that's great. And that brings us to, to the open waters where we will pick up next week. 
it's exciting. I can't get, I can't wait to get beyond that breakwater. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Beyond the Breakwater, a podcast of Elevate Community Ministries. Don't let the conversation stop here. You can email us at hello at beyondthebreakwater.org. We would love to chat with you, answer questions, plan a visit, and help you take your next step. We'll see you next week.